Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're going to be talking about leaf miners and all about leaf miners and what are they and how do we prevent it. So about six weeks ago, I did a video discussing citrus pruning, where we cut, pulled, and bended these branches to maximize fruit yields because ultimately the goal is to create um, a plant that is going to be both healthy and also very productive and as you can see with the tree behind me it's got a lot of new growth on it um, there's also some blossoms which I'll point out to you in a minute as well as a lot of mature fruit and a lot of immature fruit as well so that we'll get to enjoy um, you know the citrus throughout the year as well when you come in a little closer, what I wanted to do first and point out were these ends. And this is kind of what brought my attention here to the garden was, I wanted to coat these ends. And these were the pruned ends. And as you can see, it's starting to rot a little bit. And it's also an opening into the, um, the heart of the wood, which if there's any boring insects, they'll get right into the tree and work its way down into the trunk. Um, but as you can see, since we pruned it about six weeks ago, you can see all this new growth, which will ultimately support the flowers and the fruit um, this, this upcoming spring. But what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to take my, it basically reads Ivy Organic. It's a three-in-one tree guard paint where you just add water. It's a natural tree trunk and branch barrier protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents for use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. And it's a non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic product. And I'm simply, I mixed this just before the video, uh, but you're going to want to make sure that the oils and the, um, and the solution are all stirred properly. And then you're just going to basically dip your brush and coat these ends, like so. And that'll actually create a protective barrier against any insects as well as pathogens including viruses and bacteria. I also want to show this upcoming label. Um, within the next few months, all of the retailers will be carrying this updated yellow label and it also show on here that it's registered material for use in organic agriculture as well. So what I want to point out while I've got you here is I want to show you the citrus leaf miner and as you can see here, so let me show you some damage caused here by the um, citrus leaf miners. As you can see they've damaged the leaf. They don't just chew through. This is actually um, several months of damage later but if you take a look at the more fresh leaves which are here on the very top You'll notice these trails that are formed along the leaf. And this is not damage on top of the leaf, and nor is it damage below the leaf, but it's damage that's happening right in between the two layers of the leaf where there's less cellulose and the plant is able, um, and the insect's able to more readily consume the parts of the leaf. If we, let me give you a couple more examples here. So you can see over here, there's another leaf miner right there. And again, you, it's indicated by these tunnels that you can see going back and forth. And again, over here, you can see those tunnels as well. And then a few months ago, there was damage to these leaves and it has since burned through. There can be as few as one to as many as seven leaf miners per leaf. So the damage to the plant can be quite devastating and the disfigurement to the plant can be quite significant. Um, at the end of the day, you gotta decide, is this something I'm gonna treat or am I gonna leave? And that's what I wanna share with you now. Another important consideration is the citrus leaf miners are typically active from April, May through typically the fall. But here we are now at the end of December and I've still detected fresh and new citrus leaf miner activity, which is the latest I've ever seen in the season and we're here in Los Angeles. So here we are in Los Angeles, California dealing with a citrus leaf miner pest in the end of December. But it's not just me. My good friend Al Wilcoxon in Canton, Illinois is also dealing with citrus leaf miner in his citrus orchard that he's growing indoors. Um, and let me share a couple of pictures with you that can also further demonstrate what these citrus leaf miner look like. Let me share these photos, which I got permission from Al to share with you. Um, as you can see, the, it's indicated by the curl leaves. You can see that once 
the leaf has been damaged, it's very susceptible to burn as well. And he writes here, curled leaf, evidence of leaf minor on a Lisbon lemon. Take a look at the next photo. Again, you can see the curl leaf. He writes, curl leaf, same two top leaves, evidence of leaf minor on Lisbon lemon tree. And then he turns the leaf over and he writes, leaf minor trail, whether present or some time ago. He just discovered this when he emailed these pictures to me a few days ago. And here we go, again with the trails on the other underside of the leaf. And he writes, same two leaves showing underside presence of leaf minor activity. And the last one here, it says a third top leaf showing underside evidence of leaf minor activity, how long ago or maybe current. So here he is dealing with leaf miners. So all the way from California to Canton, Illinois, citrus leaf miner is an issue plaguing citrus all over the country. And again, I just wanted to document the fact that there is active leaf miner happening in the month of December, whereas a lot of us growers typically treat our citrus from mid spring, late spring, early summer, starting through the fall. Um, but here we're going to be treating our citrus leaf miners in December as well. And I'll explain to you why in just a minute. What I wanted to share firstly is the citrus leaf miner, it's what we're looking at and the damage that's happening to the leaf is in the larval state. So imagine with the butterfly, the butterfly has three life cycles. There's the butterfly adult, which then lays its egg and the egg then hatches into the larva. So the damage to those leaves are the larva or the caterpillar. And then that caterpillar turns into the, um, the cocoon or um, also known as the chrysalis or also the pupil stage of its life cycle and then from there continues its life cycle to become ultimately the adult that will then repeat the cycle. This entire life cycle of the leaf miner insect which is in fact a moth completes its entire life cycle within a period of two to seven weeks and in the warmer months the life cycle is faster and in the colder months it's a little slower and right now what's going to be happening with the citrus is if those larvae will continue to grow, the mature larva will um, find its way back into the soil where it will remain. And when the warmer temperatures return, it will then go into the pupils, um, pupa stage and within a matter of weeks um, emerge as an adult and continue laying more eggs upon the plant and the cycle continues. An adult female leaf miner can lay as many as 250 eggs. So with a lot of growers that say simply leave it alone, the risk is you're gonna end up with 250 more eggs on your plants causing 250 more leaves to potentially get damaged if the life cycle were, were allowed to continue. And additionally, citrus leaf miners are new here in California. This is something that um, was an insect introduced from other parts of the world and have plagued citrus growers all over the country. In addition to the risk of having a plant that's going to be disfigured with the attack of all of these larva citrus leaf miner, the other risk is the fact that these citrus leaf miners are consuming the inner part of the leaf and also leaving its feces and defecating within the plant. And that too leads to additional disease. We're talking a citrus leaf miner. Let me just pick a leaf here real quick to demonstrate. But these citrus leaf miners, if we can try to find it, are right here. The insect is right at the end of that tunnel. Hopefully you can capture that right at the tip of my finger, right at the end of that tunnel. And they're typically characterized as being yellowish or greenish in color. In the, and what is happening is the insect is consuming the inner part of the leaf and leaving behind a trail of feces. The feces is leaving behind bacteria and also um, as well as you know, harboring fungus that will ultimately cause disease within the plant. And sometimes the disease doesn't go any further than the leaf, but it'll cause leaf drop as well. So you've discovered citrus leaf miner on your plants. What do you do? How do I control it? There's a variety of ways to control it. And one, as I try to lead to is, um, hopefully we're gonna discover that there's biological controls, um, other predatory insects that will in fact 
find a way to get in between the leaf and attack these citrus leaf miners. But the fact that they're safe within the inner part of the leaf makes it very difficult for a lot of predators to find and discover and consume these pests in our garden. Uh, but there is such pests, and there are parasitic wasps um, being one option of biological control for um, for purchase that you can bring into your garden. But um, from my preliminary research, it looks like it's very expensive. An application can cost as much as $200 um, to treat. So that is one consideration is the parasitic wasp. Um, a couple others that I use here in my garden are actually right here to my left, which I'm gonna share with you as well. And these are over here. And these are over here. When it comes to treating your plants, there's two main treatments that most farmers and growers use. And one of them being is oil-based and the other one being is bacteria-based. The oil-based um, products can include such um, products as this here, which is a product made by Bonide. And it's an all-season um, horticulture and dormant spray oil. And the active ingredient right here is mineral oil. And that's all I want to um, point out over here is it's a mineral oil is the active ingredient in this product with it being 98% of the contents. So we've got this being one option. The other oil-based product I have here is this, and it's a product made by Garden Safe. And there's a lot of companies that make a neem oil-based um, pest control. And again, it's an organic way. And it says over here insecticide, as well as fungicide, as well as miticide. And when it comes to the active ingredients over here, we can see that 70% of it is extract of neem oil. And that's all I want to point out over here. So the main ingredient in this one is neem oil. The third option is this, and it's a product made by um, Captain Jack's Dead Bug. And the active ingredient in this one is spinosad. And percentage of it is only 0.5%. But spinosad is the active ingredient. So when it comes to now treating your citrus for citrus leaf miner, you can do one of two things. Treat them with oils or treat them with bacteria. And so what a spinosad based product will do when applied to your citrus plant is it'll coat the leaf with bacteria. The bacteria has a half-life, meaning half of them will be dead within as little as 45 minutes and to as long as a few days from the time you apply it with water. Um, so the half-life is very short, but it's just long enough that once it's coated on the plant, the um, insect will consume some of the bacteria and that'll cause the leaf miner to get ill and end its life. So this is one product to consider. The other one, and again, this is a bacteria-based um, method of preventing leaf miner. The other one over here being mineral oil, and it doesn't matter if it's mineral oil or there's a variety of other garden oils that can also be used, and I'm gonna put them all in the same category. But the way that this product works is it smothers the insects that are on your plant, including the leaf miner. By applying the product, you basically seal the holes in your um, and you're coating the insect and a lot of insects breathe through their skin and through their pores and by blocking them with oil that actually causes suffocation and kills the insect. But what is unique from all garden oils is a product that is based on neem oil. And what's unique about neem oil is is, is that it's got an active compound within it and it's only in neem oil and not in any other oils and hopefully we can pronounce this together i'll bring this closer so we can read it the active compound in neem oil is called azadirachin and is has the chemical molecular formula of 35 carbons 44 hydrogens and 16 oxygens and this is what it looks like so when it comes to using neem oil Unlike all the other garden oils, this too has the ability of smothering the insect once it's coated with the neem oil. But in addition to smothering, there's two other things neem oil is going to do. The first one is it's going to cause those insects to stop eating. So that'll stop that leaf miner tunneling from continuing on as soon as it comes into contact with neem oil. 
The second thing neem oil is going to do as well is it's going to interfere with the insect's hormones. And by interfering with the insect hormones, it's going to cause that life cycle to also stop, which in essence will, you know, end that life cycle and end the perpetuity of those insects from continuing to eat and breed and continue its life cycle within your garden. So there's two ways, again, neem oil, aside from smothering, is it stops it from eating and it also interferes with the insect's hormonal cycles necessary for it to complete the, um, the chain of life from egg to larva to pupa to adult and then back to egg. So two ways, if not three ways, that neem oil works that's different from all other oils. So now when using the product, I've seen some gardeners that will go and take their spinosad based product and mix it with their neem oil based product. And that's a huge, no, no, don't do that. What's happening now is aside from neem oil being anti um, insect or a pesticide, is it also has the ability of being antifungal and antibacterial. So if you're adding neem oil to spinosad, you've just killed the bacteria that's in here with the neem oil. Um, and if there's any benefit that's now left from the combination of these two, it's going to be the active component, the active compound of neem oil that's in the product or in the mixture that's going to be doing anything. But you've just killed the effectiveness of spinosad. When using these two products, make sure you space it at least three weeks apart before um, using a different treatment within your garden. So what we're going to do next is we're just going to take some neem oil and I've got my gallon sprayer over here and it says here on the back and we'll read this together here as well. So it says over here, as an insecticide for use on your fruit and vegetables, herbs, spices, roses, houseplants, flowers, trees and shrubs to simply add right here at a rate of two to four tablespoons per gallon of water and that's what we're going to do and it says it to put it on a schedule of anywhere from seven to 14 days to control it um so what we're going to do here is we're just going to shake it and apply one two Three. And again, I just want to double check here. We just read it. It says you can put between two and four tablespoons. So I'm just going right in between and putting three tablespoons to that gallon of water. And I'm just going to pump that and then we're just going to spray. And take a look at this. And when applying it as a spray, you're going to want to coat both the top and the bottom of the leaf as well. And remember, the goal is to smother those leaf miners that are within. Even though we're coating a lot of the other parts of the plant, the goal is to simply coat the newest and the freshest growth. As you can see, this is all new growth that's happened within the last month. The leaves that have hardened below do not need to be coated with the um, with basically any of the products, not the neem oil, not the mineral oil, and not the spinosad, but the leaf miners simply target the freshest and the newest growth. So anything that's typically within 30, 60, or 90 days of growth, it's only those leaves that need to be targeted. So we'll continue spraying over here, those newer leaves. And no need to spray and coat those hardened leaves that are down below. And we'll just continue that all around. Another thing to be cautious of when using oil on your citrus is the concern for causing citrus burn. We're talking about it'll burn the leaves, it could burn the fruit, um, and it can actually cause some major damage to your plants if there's any risk of temperatures being anywhere in the upper 80s, and especially up in the 90s. So when applying the product, it's a good idea to be applying it towards the end of the day, being after two, after three, after four o'clock in the afternoon, so there's no risk of heat. And then something else I like to do in the following morning after I've had my product coated on the plant from late afternoon and overnight and into the early morning of the following day, 
what I'll do is I'll take about one or two teaspoons, one or two teaspoons of the Ivory Organics product and put it into a spray bottle with some water and I'll coat those leaves after. And again, this is the following morning. I'll then coat the leaves with the Ivory Organics. So the following morning, after again the product's been coated on the plant from the previous day and overnight and going into the morning and before the warm afternoon sun comes back on the plant and possibly risk overheating the leaves and the fruit, I'll then coat it with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 spray. And if you take a look over here, you can see right now the plant is covered in what appears to be like a white sunblock, but once it dries, it'll look more like these lower leaves. As you can see, these were applied a few months ago. This helps keep the plant cool and prevent the risk of sunburn. Let me share with you a couple of examples of what um, leaf burn as well as fruit burn can look like if you've got the oils on your plant without having it coated with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1. Let me show with you. Let me share that. So if you take a look over here, you'll notice that these leaves also suffered from citrus leaf miner back last spring and last summer and we coated it with some oils. I'm not sure if it was the neem or a mineral oil without having coated it with the Ivory Organics. And you can see the damage to the leaf. You can see more damage to the leaf over here. And if you take a look right over here, this is some damage to the fruit as well. This was exposed to the sun all day long with the oils on it. The ones that were hidden behind the leaves are safe. And we can do another example over here. This one too also damaged by sunburn. It's not ripening the way the rest of the lemons are ripening. And another one down below. Again, another sunburnt fruit. It was more obvious when it was green, but this year is also damaged fruit as well. So if you've enjoyed this gardening video, be sure to like it. And most importantly, by subscribing down below, you'll be connected to all the other educational gardening videos by Ivory Organics. Thanks again for watching, and happy gardening. Mm -hmm.